going? Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have a really fun Q&A set up. You see there's two microphones there. We have a limited amount of time. So if you have a question, I would suggest probably getting in line right now. Um, and I have to remind you, it's not coming from me, but no pictures, no autograph requests, and no ticket requests. I'm sorry. So anyway, other than that, tomorrow we want to remind you to please join us across the street from 12 4 for the UFC 192 tailgate. Um, there will be so many things going on in some of your favorite fighters. It's presented by Halo 5, Paige Van Zandt. You guys like Paige? Come on, Paige Van Zandt will be there. Luke Rockhold, you guys like him? What about Cain Velasquez? Cain will be there as well. So it should be really fun. Again, that's presented by Halo 5. It's across the street tomorrow from 12 to 4. So we hope to see you guys there. Um, today is really exciting because the UFC is uh, celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. So that's really where we get to acknowledge the contributions of Latinos for a whole month. And today we're going to celebrate with some of the best Latino fighters on the roster right here on the stage answering your questions. So let's take a closer look at two of them right now. Las calidades de un peleador latino son una persona que, que entrena duro, que tiene mucha disciplina, que pelea por algo que es mucho más grande que su persona. Pelean por orgullo, pelean por un propósito y pelean con todo. Representando a los aztecas, representando a los mexicanos. Es una máquina cardiovascular. Él es de lo mejor de lo mejor. Bonito el 1-2 de boxeo de Henry. Mis raíces son mexicanas. Para mí es un honor. Soy uno de los primeritos que está llegando a México. ¿Qué, Henry? ¡Eso! El apoyo que me dan a los fans es, es increíble. Lo colocan como el Oscar de la Hoya del MMA. Lo que me gusta más de mi herencia hispana es la cultura, los chistes, la, la, el carisma que tiene la gente. Y es algo que me encanta de mis queridos hispanos. El niño de oro. Bonito el 1-2 de boxeo de Henry. Ser hispano es orgullo. Hoy Caín va por todos los latinos en Estados Unidos. Por todos los hispanoparlantes en el mundo. Y va por México esta noche Caín Velázquez. Ser un peleador de la UFC para mí, de lo más todo el tiempo yo, yo tengo, yo estoy muy orgulloso que yo puedo uh, representar, que todo el tiempo cuando, cuando yo peleo, que yo puedo uh, tener los colores de México conmigo. Él es un peleador con sangre mexicana corriendo por sus venas. Caín Velázquez. Para mí las cualidades de un peleador hispano, de tener un, un estilo pues todo el tiempo adelante, con mucho corazón, mucha acción, muchos golpes. Y nunca, pues, que vamos a rindar todo el tiempo adelante para ganar. Fiatar está maltratadísimo. ¡Se acabó! ¡Tenemos campeón! Me gusta mirar peleas de Cina y, pues, yo sé que la gente también le gusta mirar peleas que tienen mucha acción. ¡Venga, métele candela, Caí! Todo el apoyo que los fans hispanos me, me han dado hasta que yo pensé de, de pelear es una buena cosa, porque... Son los mejores fans todo el tiempo atrás de mí, cuando gano, cuando pierdo. Yo sé que a tener sus fans atrás de mí, yo quiero a, a practicar muy duro para ganar para todos los fans. Y aquí está tirando Caín, Caín Velázquez está aquí para quedarse. Yo veo en, en el futuro que los hispanos de la UFC van a, pues van a ganar, igual como en el, el, el boxeo. Hay muchos campeones de México, están ganando muchos cinturones. Señoras y señores, esto es indescriptible. Ser hispano es vivir la vida con mucho corazón, todo el tiempo pues adelante y un buen trabajador. Oh, sí, señor. All right, we've got a great group of fighters to bring to the stage. Let's start out with the number 12 ranked strawweight who made her UFC debut at UFC 190 in Brazil. Please welcome Jessica Aguilar. Welcome, your first UFC Q&A. Excited? Hi, guys. Hola, ¿cómo están? It's going to be 
a very good one. All right, let's keep bringing them out. Uh, she's currently ranked number five in the strawweight division. You know her as the Tiny Tornado. She's an alumni of the Ultimate Fighter, and she faces Michelle Waterson at UFC 194. Please welcome Tisha Torres. Hey, buddy. Well, hello. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> All right, this is somebody you just saw in the video package. He's the number five ranked flyweight. You might know him as the messenger. He takes on Juicy A Formiga in Monterey, Mexico on November 21st. Olympic gold medalist, Henry Cejudo. Hola, mis queridos paisas. Welcome. How are you guys doing? All right, let's keep him coming. He's ranked number one at 155 pounds. He is the former champion looking to get back to that strap. Taking on Eddie Alvarez in January. Showtime, Anthony Pettis. What's up, Ace Town? You got those sweet Reeboks on. I like them. <laughs> all right, and finally, this man needs very little introduction. You guys are all big fans of his. He is the former UFC heavyweight champion, Cain Velasquez. Hello, Cain. So, Kane, I, I'd like to start with you, but if all of you could answer this. Um, obviously, we're celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month here, and all of you have deep roots uh, tied to your culture. So, if you can, I'm starting with Kane going down the line. Just kind of talk about what being Hispanic and being a Hispanic fighter and this whole month of celebration really means to you. Um, as far as me being Hispanic, um, you know, comes from as far as the sport, you know, watching the sport, watching boxing, um, it's, you know, Certain Hispanics had that style of always going forward, a lot of pressure, never giving up. Um, I've always loved that, and I've always wanted my style to be that way. Um, and as far as, you know, uh, as far as the culture, you know, the food, the family, you know, being a, a close knit uh, family, um, that's, that's how I grew up, and uh, those are the things that are, that are important to me. Yeah, for me, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, in, it's, in the, it's in our blood. I mean, you look back at uh, boxing, you look back at uh, even yourself, man. I look up to you a lot. Uh, the great champs in, uh, you know, boxing and all these uh, combative sports, they come with Hispanic, with Hispanic blood in them. So for me, it's just, it's in my blood. Uh, we were born to do this. So uh, I, I just, I'm proud to be, you know, Hispanic and doing this. No, absolutely. Likewise, too. Just to touch up on both of them, you know, someone like Cain Velasquez, who's, uh, who's paved the, the road for when it comes to the, uh, uh, the sport of mixed martial arts. You know, we think of Oscar De Loya, we think of uh, uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, but for me in MMA, I think of Cain Velasquez, and I think he's kind of paved the road for us, and uh, he's someone that, that I admire, that I look up to, so, so thank you for that, Cain. Hello, everybody. Um, for me, being a part of the UFC and being a female fighter and a Latina, for me, it's a platform to show the world that you know women can be beautiful, can be strong, and we can empower others to you know not necessarily fight, but just to defend themselves and to um, be a woman in sport today. And I think that oftentimes, especially within the Spanish community, there's the whole stigmatism of machismo and they think that you know sometimes women shouldn't be fighting but when they see us girls out there and us ladies you know doing what we love to do and we actually do have talent um, I think that just spreads the love within uh, you know all parts of the world so uh, I'm proud to be a female fighter in the UFC and also a Latina. For me being a part of uh, the UFC and, and a part of the Hispanic Heritage Month is uh, a big thing to me uh, because I'm very proud of, of my, my heritage and, and uh, I again like Tisha said I get to do uh, what I love and uh, I'm just an athlete like all these these uh, athletes here standing so it's uh, it's uh, I, I fight with great pride and joy uh, to have our our, uh, our blood 
Absolutely. Well, it's an honor to have you guys up here. We really appreciate all of you taking the time to be with us. Um, I know you have a very busy schedule, so we're glad you're able to answer some fan questions. So let's open it up to you guys. If we can, start at this microphone over here. Uh, hi. Uh, this question is for Anthony Pettis. Um, Cowboy Saron was on the podcast with Joe Rogan, and he said that you were going to help him out for the fight he has coming up. Is that true or no? No, that's not true at all. Uh, he, uh, he made a comment at a fight saying uh, if I was fighting uh, Khabib that he was going to, uh, he hates that guy and he would help me, he would help me train for Khabib. And uh, he's, I'm like, you got RDA next, you know. So he, he took what I said and put it out there like the guy was going to help him train. I'm, I'm possibly fighting this dude again. So, and he was talking big, big stuff when I fought him before. So definitely not helping him out training. All right. <laughs> Thanks, man. Fair enough. Let's go here. Hello. Um, hi, my question is for Mr. Cain Velasquez. Um, I know a couple months ago there were some rumors that uh, you were requesting to fight on this card. Is there something that stopped it or prevented you from fighting on this card? Yeah, um, as soon as the last fight, um, you know, Daniel wanted to be on this on this fight card, so I said it's perfect, you know, for us both to be on this fight card. This is this is the fight that that uh, that I want to come to and, and, and fight. And then um, Daniel ended up calling me and saying. Uh, Possibly thinking about maybe January versus Verdum rematch. And I said, "Cool, I'm down with that, and I'll uh, I'll wait for that fight." And then, well, now we're here uh, March, so March in Brazil. So I'm happy about that. All right, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. You had good memories here in Houston, though, Kane. You had some good memories here in Houston. I did. I did. Uh, you know, memories here. Yeah, of uh, you know fighting against uh, you know Dos Santos, uh, the uh, trilogy. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Correct. That guy might have been here. All right, let's go over here. Uh, this question for Kane. Um, my question is, I seen you smash pretty much everybody in the UFC that you have fought. And I was just wondering if not going to Mexico early enough because of the altitude played a big part in your fight because um, you didn't fight the same. I saw you lose wind when you never do. Your cardio is always 100%. You always fight 100%. And I was just wondering if that's a mistake you made. Yeah, definitely a mistake I made. You know, I wasn't out there um, early enough. I should have been out there, you know, doing my whole camp, you know, and I wasn't. That's, again, it's a thing of not knowing my first time fighting there and also um, just, you know, thinking that, that, you know, I would be okay out there, and I wasn't. So, again, a mistake that I've learned from, you know, and now i uh, looking to move on. So, you know, just just happy to get the rematch. And that's it. Yeah, because I, one more thing, I know because I know if y'all fight at the, if you, now that you already know the mistake, I know you could take them. I will. I will. Thank you. I actually want to follow up on that, um, Henry. You did fight on that card, and you were out in Mexico. What, forty days early? <laughs> no, I was actually out there two weeks prior. Oh, two. Oh, I don't know why. Yeah, no, but the, the altitude is crazy, and I could tell. I, I, for sure, Kane. I mean, I, I probably wouldn't want to fight in Mexico City ever again, if unless I'm out there for maybe a month, month and a half. I mean, it's yeah. it's, it's serious. Yeah, for probably those, probably next time would be the whole camp. I mean, if, you know, if it does come up again, I would I would do it again definitely. You know, but it would be the whole camp out there. Yeah, for those of you who didn't fight in Mexico City and where you go to places, even like Denver, where altitude is an issue, is this something you have to look at a little differently? Um, because there were some performances on that entire card that were affected. Um, is that something where you guys would maybe talk to your camp about what changes you would make or maybe ask for a fight in a different location? Yeah, most definitely. You want to do, you want to do everything you can to, to win. So, I mean, if uh, going there a couple weeks early is uh, necessary, you got to make that, them sacrifices. So, yeah, I've never fought in Colorado or Mexico, so... I haven't had that chance, uh, experience yet, but yeah, if I do fight, I'll definitely go early. I fought in Mexico, as you guys probably know, and uh, definitely the altitude was a problem, and issue. Two weeks wasn't enough. We'd need to be there a lot longer, but the thing about being there a lot longer is, you know, bringing your coaches out there, that's a, a huge issue. Coming from big camps like most of us come from, it's hard to bring your, your coach out there if you know six weeks. So um, given the, another opportunity to fight in Mexico, I don't know if I'd say yes, unfortunately. Uh, maybe it'd have to be in Monterey or somewhere where there isn't any altitude. I would have to say yes because it's always been a dream of mine to fight in Mexico, um, and I would I would obviously do my whole camp there in Mexico because yeah. it's it's a huge deal. Absolutely, right? Let's go over here. My question is for all of them: Who are y'all going for, Canelo or Cotto? <laughs> Cotto. Canelo. Las Boricuas. Uh, Canelo. <laughs> and I'm half and half, so I'm I'm torn between the two, but I think Canelo. Uh, that's, what, that's what I was wondering. I think Canelo. <laughs> I, you know, he's, he's Canelo. Canelo's the man. Yeah, but Canelo. Yeah. 
Thank you. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Josh. I'm with the MMAcommunity.com. Thank you all so much for coming down to Houston. My question is for Anthony. Um, you got a fight coming up with Alvarez coming up next. Just wondering if you can talk about some of the challenges there and if you're still gunning for that Dos Anjos fight afterwards. Yeah, man. Um, you know, uh, Dos Anjos is definitely on the radar. After a fight like that, you know, you got you to gotta get that back. So uh, right now i got to focus on Eddie Alvarez, another good fighter. Um, you know, based on his last two performances, I'm not that impressed. You know, I think, uh, you know, 100%, if I'm in there 100% and I'm feeling healthy like, like I, the way I fight, I don't think it's even a challenge. Hey, thank you much. All right, uh, first off, Henry, thank you for standing up for what is right. You've got so much of my respect for your Nick Diaz situation. Free Nick. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you standing up, and I, I would wish that more UFC fighters did, but I understand. Uh, but thank you for taking the steps that you needed to and standing up for what was right. Uh, and also, Anthony, once you get through Eddie, uh, there's a brash little Irishman at 145. Has he been on your mind at all in the future? If he goes to 55, definitely, man. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what, yeah. yeah so, exactly. I mean, Connor, that, at least he's talking, he's doing his thing, man, but... Uh, no, he hasn't beaten no one yet for me to feel like he's on my radar. I think exactly. He's, he's still down there. Exactly. Well, thank you, champ. Hello. Hey. First, I wanted to thank Megan for the beautiful comment that she wrote me on Twitter. And no after, problem. <laughs> after six years, this is still kind of nervous, but this is for Anthony. What is your vision with the new Pettis Martial Arts Gym? Do you open? And do you plan on expanding to more states like your fave Houston? Yeah, you know what? Uh, that for the Pettis Martial Arts, it's more for, uh, it was for my brothers. Uh, you know, Sergio's going to be running the mixed martial arts side. My older brother's already my, my partner in my uh, traditional martial arts side. So uh, just, just bring it all together. The mixed martial arts, the traditional martial arts, what I grew up in. Um, for Milwaukee, I just wanted it to be a fun place for everybody to come train at. You know, so everybody can come see me train, see me doing my thing. Um, when my career is over fighting, I think I'll definitely look to expand other places. Okay, and I just wanted to also show some Houston love to you, Serge, Duke, Liz, Josh, Aaron, Eric, all of y'all. I love y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> she knows the whole crew. She wow. had it written down on her phone, though. She had to, like, read the phone list. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go ahead. All right, uh, this question's for Anthony. Um, so your little brother's fighting tomorrow night, and you tend to fight on the same cards he does. Um, but at UFC 185, um, he didn't quite get a good result. How much did that play into your mentality fighting later on that night? You know what? In mixed martial arts, every man's their own man, man. No matter you have the biggest camp, when you get an octagon, that, that door closes. Is you, you and the other person fighting? So uh, I'm not going to blame it on my little brother. That was all on me, man. I lost that fight. That was all yeah. my preparation. That, that's why that went wrong. Um, but, uh, you know, that, us fighting on the same card won't happen again, though. <laughs> I th it went good the first time, the second time, not so well. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll focus on whoever's fighting, and, and that's it. I appreciate it. Thanks, man. What's going on? Uh, first of all, did y'all get in trouble or something? There's a reason y'all didn't get chairs or something? Uh, <laughs> we, they always have a stand. <laughs> They're making them stand. Or, uh, <laughs> anyways, Showtime, big fan, as you can see. Met yeah, you uh, you. at your fight, unfortunate loss and everything. But, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, you're a champ. Uh, we've, we've been uh, fans, you know, my wife and I, since the WEC, and, and we know you're going to bounce back. It's, it's no big deal. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so we're definitely looking to, uh, towards the future. I want to know uh, your fight with Eddie Alvarez. Uh, going into that fight, is there something, uh, of course you're not going to disclose it, but is there something specific that you see about Eddie Alvarez's game that you might want to take advantage of, or are you just more focused on just doing your your uh, your camp and your focus and just bringing the best of what you got there? Yeah, I think I'm going to go back to focusing on uh, what I'm good at. You know, I last last fight I was trying to focus on, I'm going to watch the wrestling and all this other stuff. When I go out there and uh, you know, I'm focused on what I'm going to do and not worry about what they're going to do, I feel like I have the best results. So uh, this fight, you know, obviously we're going to watch a little bit of film, see what, he's, uh, you know, what he does and how he stands. And uh, other than that, man, it's just me being myself. Awesome. Thanks, champ. Go ahead. Okay. Um, as fans, um, you know, we always try to get your picture. We try to get autographs from each, you know, whoever we meet. And it's something that we like, you know, that we get excited for. But when y'all first made it to the big show, either it be in UFC or another organization, was there a particular fighter that you were excited to see, to meet, to have a picture with? And this goes for all of y'all. Um, 
Um, for me, I was with Invicta prior to the UFC, so just meeting all the female fighters I had uh, followed when I was in kickboxing, that they were MMA fighters, and I was looking into it and like, oh, I want to do that one day, and actually being able to meet them was really amazing, and then being on the same card as them, and then one of my biggest moments for me was actually fighting on the same card as, as Kane in Mexico, so um, yeah. And for me, it was today. I just took a selfie with Mr. Kane Velasquez. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, for me, um, there, there was one guy that, that I loved watching when I first when I first started you know, practicing the sport, and uh, a couple weeks ago I was able to take a picture with him, and that's uh, Fedor. Um, able to take a picture with him over in San Jose, so that was the thing that I, you know, a guy that I've always watched, you know, watched his career, um, just thought he was uh, amazing. So. Yeah, I got a couple. I got uh, Anderson Silva, one of my all-time favorites. Oh, yeah. GSP and uh, BJ Penn. Nice. Yeah, I, I think for me, <clears throat> getting to the old school kind of, I would just say Randy Couture. I think Randy Couture, older gentleman, he was so capable at age 45, 46, able to fight the way he fought. He would box. He, would, he was just a dirty fighter. I think I've, I've always admired Randy. Absolutely. All right, thank you, guys. Thanks, man. Hello, good afternoon. Good to see you guys here in Houston. <laughs> My question is for Perez. Uh, in the past, you talked about super fights with Aldo, and uh, he's got a fight schedule with, with Connor. How do you see that fight going, and who would you rather fight in a super fight, Connor or Aldo? Um, I think uh, as far as competition, Aldo, man. Aldo's one of them guys that's you know, he's been on top for a long time. He's, uh, he's beating everybody. He's, you know, anybody in the 145 division that challenge, he's beating them. So uh, Aldo would be a good challenge. Um, uh, in that fight, I don't know. I think, like I said, Connor hasn't beat anybody yet. Chad Mendes on two weeks notice. You know, he's hard, it's hard to tell how good he really is. If he beats Aldo, then he's legit. So we'll see, we'll see uh, a lot of uh, questions will be answered when they fight. Cool. And Kane, I'm from El Salvador in Central America. You have lots of fans down there. Get a shout out maybe for the entire Central American community that follows you. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Shout out to everybody, you know, Central America, South America, you know, thank you for always being behind me. I mean, that's, uh, that's awesome. You don't know that I have fans down there. That's, that's great. All right. Thank you, champ. <laughs> I got a question for all the fighters. I come from a big Hispanic family, and everyone's influenced me. And I'd like to know from each one of y'all, who's influenced y'all? Uh, for me, it's been my parents, um, you know, just... Knowing what, what, what they went through, knowing uh, what my dad went through to come over, you know, to the U.S. and, um, you know, watching them every day work, you know, a job that didn't pay much. But, hey, you know, they, they, they didn't complain. They went out there, did their job all day, and, you know, um, they were happy. So that, I mean, now, you know, now as far as what I'm doing, uh, my job's easy compared to what they did. So. Yeah, for me, it'd be my mom. Um, I lost my dad when I was uh, 16, so my mom raised three boys by herself. Um, put us in martial arts and you know, kept us all together. So my mom's like the rock of my family. Um, and now my daughter too. So my daughter's a big inspiration. So when I fight, you know, it's, it's for her. Yeah, I think for me, uh, I had to say immigrants, immigrants that come to this country. And maybe they come here, maybe not the most political way, but they come here to live, to, you know, to escape poverty. And I know see my mom has a little kid, seeing her raise seven kids by herself. Uh, you know, at times we would like, pretty much eat once a day. But, you know, that motivated me, the fact that my, mo my mother used to work with dignity, pride. I think more importantly, she would work with the attitude of no excuse. So that's something that's always inspired me. Um, kind of similar story. Grew up with a single mother, three kids, and uh, karate was expensive, but she always made sure it was paid for. And uh, I'm glad she did that because now, 20 years later, I'm doing my dream job. And I also have to say my mother. Uh, I lost my father as well when I was young, and, and uh, she, you know, uh, she brought myself and two other brothers up, and uh, here I am today, so I'm living a dream. I choose my life, and I choose MMA. She didn't choose her life, so uh, she's my inspiration. I want to kind of follow up on that, because all of you have these incredible stories of inspiration from your parents. Um, do you remember when you were first able to buy them something mean meaningful, where you were like, I can finally do this for my parents, or take them somewhere, show them an experience that made you proud to be their child, but also you felt like you maybe were paying them back a little bit? Absolutely. I think I was, uh, when I took her to Japan for one of my fights, and it was a fight that um, I was fighting the number one uh, straw weight in the world, and she was right in, you know, put her right in center in, in front cage, and so that was my moment to, 
take her to the temples and take her out of the country where she would never, you know, imagine traveling out of, from Mexico to here. So that was my moment. Pretty incredible. Yeah, when I bought my mom a, her house and her car for uh, Christmas last year after I won a belt, that was a big moment for me. Yeah. So yeah, that's something I was proud of. You will. Um, for me, um, growing up, uh, it was tough because uh, I, I tell my wife and my, my, my family now to this day that I can count 10 houses that I grew up in in, in my, my small city. And uh, being able, you know, when I, was, when I was that young, I told myself that if I can at some age, I'm, I'm going to buy my parents a house. So I was able to do that. So that definitely was uh, a big, big uh, dream that I had in mind that, that I fulfilled. So. Um, I think I think for me was uh, you know being because I, I started making money uh, when I was in high school I turned professional and I was still a high school kid I was training for the Olympics and allowing her to be able to buy her plane tickets to go to Mexico City and not just that but I think the biggest thing for me was my mom wasn't able to attend the Olympics due to her citizenship status so I think at the Olympic Games the influence that I had and with corporate sponsors I was able to get her you know it was unfortunate that she wasn't there to see me win gold. But, you know, a few years later, she was able to, uh, you know, watch me actually compete in, in, in Mexico. So to me, that was like the biggest deal, is allow her to get her citizenship. Absolutely. For me, I'm still on goal status. I haven't been able to buy my mom a house or anything like that. But I think the best moment I have had my, with my mom during my mixed martial, martial arts career was when uh, Dana called me one night to welcome me to the UFC and telling me that I'd be a part of the Ultimate Fighter. I called my mom and I told her I had some really great news to tell her, and um, or some really surprising news. And like she thought, like maybe I was gonna say I was pregnant or something like that. But <laughs> so, so she was kind of worried. She's like, "Tell Congrats. me, tell me now." So um, I went to her house and I told her that you know Dana just called me and we just started crying and it was a really special moment for me that all the hard work you know had uh, come to this. Absolutely, it doesn't have to be monetary. Exactly. She's probably so incredibly proud. All your parents have to be so proud of you and all your accomplishments up here. It's, very cool. They supported you. Now you can support them back. All right. Good question. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go over here. Question for Henry. Uh, Mighty Mouse has made it clear that it, he thinks it's foolish to boycott uh, fighting in Nevada. So let's say you were to get a call with, for that title shot. Would you really pass up on it? And you guys are going to think I'm crazy. You guys are really, I've, I've, bec I've been the best in the world. And I, I believe my self-worth is more, it's, it's more important to me than, than my net worth. I am willing to pass it to somebody else, that's fine. It's no hurry. I know I'll be the best soon. So I will be willing to give it up for people to, for people to seriously, for people to, you know, so, so Nick Diaz can get his, his proper justice. And again, man, I, I, I love the UFC. You guys have done a tremendous job with me. You guys have treated me so well. But man, I ain't a slave to nobody. And, and I'll tell that to Dana, and, and I love him, and, and the Fertitas, but if you, if you really think about it, the Fertitas and Dana White, they would do anything for each other. I'm just trying to help a fellow UFC member. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate it. Thank you. My question is for Kane. Uh, you did mention that you met Fedor a few weeks ago. How does it feel knowing that he didn't sign to the UFC? <laughs> because personally, I think you could take him. <laughs> um, you know, again, if... Uh, if we was signed here and, we, we, and then they, they, sit, they set up a fight, then yeah, I, I would do that definitely, you know. But uh, again, just this more thing of uh, respect, you know. It's a thing of, uh, you know, you, you see somebody as a figure that, that you, looked up, you, you looked up to, you know. But if it, obviously if it came, you know, for that time to fight, then that would happen. Appreciate it. Uh, just out of curiosity, is it possible to get a picture with you later? Thank you. <laughs> You're going to get me in trouble. All right, uh, this question's for Pettis. Uh, before you won the belt from Benson in 155 in the UFC, there was a lot of hype about you and Aldo. Do you still feel like that fight would have as much hype or more around it? I don't know. What do you guys think? Aldo, me and Aldo? I mean, fan favorite fight. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I mean, Aldo has his hands full with Connor. I got my hands full with uh, Alvarez. So once we get past these fights, we'll see what happens. Okay, thank you. That would take place at 155 if it happened, right? Anthony? That would take place at 155, right? No, no going down to 145? No, nah, I don't need to go down to 55, uh, 45. I, mean, I already won the belt at 55. I think that's my home. Um, you know, unless, uh, unless, unless it's the right money, I ain't cutting an extra 10 pounds. <laughs> I don't blame you. Go ahead. 
Um, Henry, I just wanted to say thanks a lot for doing what you did. I think it takes uh, unbelievable courage to stand by your convictions. Uh, so kudos to you for that. I'll be watching all your fights until the day you fucking retire. So congrats to you. Um, I guess Children, language. Sorry. I guess for the rest of you, uh, my question is, um, should we be testing for pot in the sport? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it helps you win fights, so I don't think it's a, it's a big thing. You know, it's not like TRT or like... Uh, you know, steroids or something. So uh, it just makes you happy and kind of tired. So I don't, if anything, it's a, it's a disadvantage and an advantage. So nah, it's not a big deal. I don't think so. I, I, it makes you happy and hungry. <laughs> True. Nobody else wants to touch that one. And okay. I don't want to, yeah. And I don't want to be happy when I'm in a cage. <laughs> or hungry during or fight hungry. week. All right, I don't blame you guys. You don't worry about it. We'll move on to the next one. <laughs> Over here. Hey, what's up, guys? Much respect to all you guys up there. Really appreciate what you guys do. Hey, what, um, hey, why don't you guys all get tested comments. right now? What? What's that? You guys were supposed to respond. Why don't you test them all real quick? <laughs> it was, oh, wasn't it a question for all of us? Here. <laughs> oh, but real quick, uh, Henry Cejudo, again, just like everyone else said, just want to give you much props. Uh, to me, it's bigger than Nick Diaz. It's not just about Pod or Nick Diaz, but it's the fact that you're actually standing up for all the fighters that are standing up there with you because he was wrongly convicted. Any one of these people could have been wrongly convicted. And so the fact that you're standing up, much love to you. You got a fan out of me. One more round, baby. Uh, Anthony Pettis, love you, man. Uh, big fan of Thanks, you. Bro. Um, been in Taekwondo uh, all my life since I was four years old. So when you came into the game and you started showing your Taekwondo, I was like, finally, a guy really representing Taekwondo. Korean martial arts, baby. Um, sure. Cain Velasquez, dude, you're the man. And I know a lot of people are saying, hey, what's up? You know, it was the, the fact that he came to Mexico too late. Here's what I think, man. I think stylistically, and I got much respect for you, I think stylistically, Doom is a very scary individual. His length is there, his clinch is there, and his ground game is there. So I think if you train harder, I think if you train harder, it isn't gonna make that much of a difference in the results. Hey, do you have a question? Let me finish. Do you have a question? Let me finish. Let me finish. It was cool when you were the hype man, but now. You know what? Let me finish. No, right? Kane, let me finish. But here's what I do believe. I believe you can win this fight, but it's not by training harder, but it's by training differently. And what I mean by that is instead of. Do you have a question? Let me finish. Let me finish. Do you have a question? He does not need to. You can hear me? Okay. Okay, we're gonna turn your mic off because you don't Foot have a movement. question. Foot movement. Can you can't be the typical cane you've always been. Thank you. Next question. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. You just wait. And, you just wait and see what happens in March, all right? Whoa. Yeah. I can't hear you. I can't hear you now, but you'll wait well, and see hey, what happens in if March. If you don't have a question, this goes for everyone. Please don't waste their time. You are not a coach. Kane has a coach at AKA. He's good. Over here. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Johnny from Galveston. <laughs> and uh, real quick, my question is for Kane. Uh, not picking back what he said, but uh, if any positives you could take from the Verdun fight, what would you take? Positive stuff? Um, you know, I, I think the first round was, was, was mine. You know what I mean? I mean, that, that's pretty much it. But, I mean, in between, I mean, I felt something different, you know? Um, you know, sitting in the corner, I felt, yeah, like I was, just wasn't myself. It wasn't like um, I couldn't get air in. If I, it was just like my, my body wasn't reacting, you know, and I, I felt that, you know. So, again, learn from my mistakes, you know, move forward. And um, I've been in this, you know, in this position before, so I know what to do. I know what to do to get it back, and I will. I'm going to do that. All right, no problem. All right, thank you. Hey, kick his ass in March. We'll go back to that microphone, which hopefully is turned back on. Go ahead. There we go. Is it on? Yep. Right. I just want to say what's up uh, to Kane and Henry. I got a mutual friend with Tom Ortiz and John Moraga. Met them last year, man. Broke bread. Really cool dudes. I got uh, two questions. I got a question for Anthony. I know you mentioned losing your dad, and um, losing your dad made you want to step up to be the man of the house. Do you think if you wouldn't have lost your dad, you would be in this position? Yeah, I don't know, man. I think uh, <laughs> I think uh, everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, um, Losing my dad definitely helped me, you know, push me into this direction. Um, you know, I had, to, I had to step up at a young age. Um, so maybe it wouldn't happen as fast or, or maybe it wouldn't happen at all. So I, I have no idea if, if I would be in this position without that happening. But I, you know, I definitely, I would trade it all to have my dad back for sure. That's what's up, man. I have a question for the um, Tisha and Jessica. 
at what age did you start MMA and at what age did you start taking it serious? I have my daughter and, she, and she's in Taekwondo because of Anthony and she's an orange belt right now. She's five years old. Well, I started, I started in 2006, so I was 26 years old. I was an old start, you know, I started uh, old. And I start, I just got, I was offered my fight. I had five days to train. I took the fight and I said, that will never happen to me again. So that's what kept me in the game and here I am. Worked for, out for you. For me, I started when I was five with karate, taekwondo, and just led from one thing to another. I started kickboxing when I was 18. I think I had my first MMA fight when I was 21. And now, I guess, it's five years later, 26, <laughs> I'm in the UFC. But funny story is, Jag and me are from the same camp, American Top Team, and uh, I always wanted to be a part of her gym. I was originally with a jiu-jitsu gym, but I knew I needed something more. And Jag was uh, one of my idols, still one of my idols today, and it's amazing that I get to train with her, and she's in the UFC now because she deserved it for a long time, and I'm happy she's, she's here as well. Thank so you, nice. guys. Appreciate the time. Yeah. Um, my question is for Anthony. Do you think Donald can be the champion? Yeah, I think uh, it depends what Cowboy so shows up. Um, I feel like when Cowboy gets to these uh, big fights like this, he doesn't get the performance he does before. So uh, if the right Cowboy shows up and uh, the, the testing is, uh, is good, I think Cowboy could be champ. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. Hi, my question is for Kane. Um, do you think help coming from Yuma has helped you with being champion or when you were champion, like stay humble and who helped you the most when you were in Yuma? Um, in Yuma, I mean, it was, yeah, you know, definitely my parents and then just the uh, people I always had around me as far as coaches, you know, I always kept myself busy, um, you know, with playing football or, or uh, wrestling. Um, I think, I think, yeah, as far as keeping humble, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a small place. That's where I come from. And I think definitely, um, I think it's just, you know, in me, even though, you know, the limelight and everything else, um, I feel like I haven't changed, you know. Um, and that's, I think I have a lot to uh, just thank as far as my parents, as far as where I came from also, but just me and myself not being, uh, you know, not, not, not really wanting the, the uh, limelight, just kind of want to do my job as far as fight and train, and that's it. All right, thank you. Go ahead. All right, how y'all doing? So All right, good. man, I, I don't awesome. believe in uh, softball questions, man, so I'm getting ready to spit straight fire. A lot of my friends say that um, when they read my tweets that they actually feel a little dumber afterwards. <laughs> Do you think it's a good career move that none of y'all follow me on Twitter? And, <laughs> and, um, and my second question is, is a hot dog a sandwich? And I'll hang up and listen. Thanks, guys. Is, the hot, is a hot dog a sandwich? Okay, hard-hitting questions here at the UFC Q&A. If you wanted us to follow you on Twitter, you should have said your name. <laughs> Dedication. What up, yo? Uh, I am at Seamus Keith. S-E-U-M-A-S-K-E-I-T-H. Most likely not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. And that's it? Yes. That is it. Hello. Okay. Let's go to Mike over here. What's up, guys? Hey, um, a friend of mine passed away a few weeks ago. I just wanted to ask y'all if y'all could throw up a V in her honor. Thank you. I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah. I have a two-part question for Kane. How are you feeling spiritually since last fighting Verdum, since we have, uh, you're going to be fighting him again? I know uh, you lost that, that last fight, but now you're making those corrections. And internally, I know that I saw you very hurt because you were in Mexico City, and it hurts you a lot, but you never vocalized really how you really felt. And a lot of times as a Latin culture, we sort of take that within, and we prepare until we finally meet that person again, you're going to release it. How do you feel spiritually right now? Um, yeah, yeah. Again, I'm yeah. I'm very much uh, all emotions keep them in. You know, um, I've always been that way. Um, I don't speak about my emotions hardly ever. You know, my wife will tell you she. Um, I don't speak much at all. Um, 
That's all right. But, you know, it's again. I but I I feel the sport is very simple. You know, I, I don't I don't think too much into it. You know, it's I got to go out there, train hard. You know, get better. And that fight day, you know, on that night, is the night that I have to, I have to perform. Mm -hmm. And as simple as that. You know, not think too much into it. I know what I did wrong. Again, mm -hmm. move forward, go out there, get better, and, you know, win the fight when it counts. That's it. Second part of my question is with Wadoom. He said some things last fight that I found pretty uh, offensive, that he said that you weren't Mexican, that you really weren't Mexican. And, j and he thinks that he, just because he speaks Spanish, he's Mexican, but he's not. How do you feel personally about him? Having to fight him, you know, I just, uh, just you know, think, uh, you know, as far as him, he said that fine, you know, but you know, the next day, I saw him, he tried to, sh you know, be all buddy buddy. Shake your hand. Yeah, and I think that's, I, I think that's bullshit, you know. If you yeah. say something, yeah, yeah, exactly. Stay, stay that way. Don't be, don't be a two faced because I, I don't respect that. So. All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my question is for Atisha. What goes through your mind when you watch Johanna fight? Because on one hand, you have to be in awe of her skill, but at the same time, you have to know that a fight with her is inevitable. For me, when I watch the strawweight division, I watch it as a fan and I watch it as a competitor. I'm a fan of the sport, so I'm definitely a fan of Joanna Champion and her skills. Um, but on the other hand, you know, it is realistic that one day I could be fighting her. I think that she's great, and I think that um, she'll be champion for a while, but I don't think she's, you know, undefeatable. And I think that um, my title shot will come down, the, down in the future, I guess, but um, I'm taking my time with it, you know. I want to grow, and I still believe that I have things that I need to fix and learn before I go, I'm able to fight her. All right. Thank you. Jessica, what do you think about that? I think she's she's making the right decision. I think uh, you know there's there's always growing, like Henry said. You take your time. You know she's been uh, you know a black belt in karate. She's been there. She's done that. She knows what it is to be a champion. So just take your time, and you sh I think she's making the right decision. But I I can see her as a champion. <laughs> she made support. Uh, what did you say? I, we can't hear you guys. Uh, I have a question for everybody. Uh, I you. recently just switched camps. I've been there for six years, and I'm just wondering how you guys feel about when is it time to like switch up, and how do you know when you're ready? I've been with the same camp my whole career, man, so I really can't answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. When I was with the jiu-jitsu school that I was with before American Top Team, the main reason why I did change was because it was predominantly jiu-jitsu, and I knew that to be um, a, a more evolving fighter, more all-around fighter, I needed to get with the best camp in the area, and American Top Team was that camp, and it was the best change that I can make for my career. So I guess it just depends on why you're, you're wanting this change. Is it for personal reasons, or is it because you feel like you haven't evolved? I don't know. It just depends. It's personal, I guess. All right, thank you. Oh, and I have a question for, I have a question for Kane. Is there any room, <clears throat> is there any room at AKA for a scrappy young Walter White? <laughs> There's always room for somebody there. Yeah, anybody comes in, you know, uh, just come in. You know, if, if we think that, that you can benefit from us, if we can benefit from you, I mean, yeah, definitely, always. All right, thank you. All right, I, ha I have two questions for the whole panel, or two-part question for the whole panel. If you were locked up in a room for 24 hours with one fighter, who would you love it to be? And then who would you hate it to be? <laughs> Love, like as in they get to kick it and have some fun. Like who, who are some fighters you like to hang out with or you're happy when you're doing signings together? One uh, thing's for sure, I want to be locked in with Kane, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough question. Uh, I, guess no I wouldn't like to be with Carla. As mean, as that's a mean person. Him. I don't like mean people. Um, I would like to be with Tisha. I mean, she's cool. Yeah, yeah. you guys are friends. Yeah. I, say, I say my little bro, and the uh, person I don't want to be with is uh, Nate Diaz. I guess it's like DC, right? We're going like, to hang out and chill. No, not, not like that, though. It's like, <laughs> hang out, chill. You said locked in a room doesn't mean we got to do anything. We sit there and talk. Yeah, hang out with friends. We play like card games or something. I don't know. And then, and then I have a question for Kane. How long do you think you would last against J.J. Watts? <laughs> Oh, uh, 
in, in what? F fighting or football? In the octagon. The octagon. Um, I don't know. Does he have any skills? Does he like know any fighting? He's a really good vertical. You're asking too many questions. <laughs> it was a simple question. Just a <laughs> maybe. How long would JJ Watt last with Kane? That's probably the better question. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I don't know what kind of, I don't know if he wrestles, if he has a wrestling background. If he's just a football player, he comes in here. I mean, yeah, it'd be one, one round. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Oh, uh, hi. I don't look it, but I actually am real young. Um, my question is for all of you. <laughs> uh, what's your advice for young fighters that want to be in your shoes? Get some good health insurance. Find, find a good health insurance. Good health insurance. <laughs> and a good uh, camp. Yeah, you gotta uh, just, I guess if you're young and you want to be in the sport, you got to find a good gym that you feel comfortable at and uh, that can let you grow. And uh, you got to just be passionate about the training and the rest happens. Experience for me, I think, was the biggest part. Having a significant amount of fights before you turn professional, make sure you're winning those fights before you turn professional. It's not about trying to make some money or, you know, be in the limelight. You want to do it the right way. Take your time, especially if you are young, you'll have the time to take. So I think gaining the experience before, you know, pushing yourself to the next level. Well, I, I think if you do want to succeed, I kind of live this like in my life. Like you have to truly understand the true meaning of sacrifice. And a lot of people want, they see the glamour, they see people on stage and all this crazy stuff. But really, there's a price to be paid for this. You know, so I live by, by three things that's happened in my life, and I call it dream, sacrifice, victory. The bigger the dream, the, the sacrifice has to be greater. So if you dream big, sacrifice all, you will enjoy victory. And you're inspiring, bro. God's inspiring. <laughs> Quote that. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, just, just finding it, yeah, Jim. And put your time in. I mean, that's it. You know, spend your time in there, just like just like a normal job. I mean, you have to be there all day. You know, fine tuning your skills. You know, getting better always. And I mean, and then even when you do get to the top, you always have to. Even from there, you have to try to evolve from there. You know, it's just never ending. So. Let's go over here. We only have time for a couple more questions. So we'll uh, try my question's for Henry. I first met you at, in the Fargo Dome at Freestyle Nationals, and I was wondering, when, what was your deciding decision into going to the OTC instead of attending Division I college? Well, I think uh, I always had the dream of becoming an Olympic champion. Ever since I was a little kid watching the 96 Olympics, when I saw uh, Michael Johnson shatter gold in the 200. It wasn't even wrestling. It was the track and field. I think that that's fire to always like burn within me. And uh, th that was it. I, I was never really a fan of becoming a college wrestler, being a four-time NCAA champ or whatever. My goal was to be the best in the world. So ain't nothing changing from mixed, mar mixed martial arts to wrestling. So it's just a matter of time for me. I got a uh, question for Pettis. Uh, Pettis, uh, what kind of wrestling, what kind of jiu-jitsu have you done to get ready for the next fight? Man, I got a... Uh... Izzy Styles, my new coach, uh, same coach as John Jones. I bought him in. He's in Chicago, so uh, I, I'm starting to train with him. Um, I'm not going to focus. You know what? I'm never going to catch up to these guys in wrestling. You know, I can't, I'm not going to be a, a college-level wrestler. Uh, my goal is to understand it enough to, to defend it and do what I do well, and that's uh, striking. So uh, I'm not going to focus on becoming a great wrestler. Or, or, my my jits game's always been good. You know, I always have a good jiu-jitsu game. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not going to try catching up in wrestling anymore. I'm just going to be able to defend it and then, you know, neutralize it for what's, what I'm good at. Uh, one tip to get me to kick as fast as you. One tip? <laughs> yeah. Man, I just I, I grew up kicking, man. I started Taekwondo when I was four, so I just spent years and years of kicking, I guess. I feel you. Kane, um, what was I going to ask you? Um, I'm about to take my first pro fight. I'm looking for a pro fight. Amateur career is pretty good. Uh, pretty give me, good. Uh, What's pretty some, good? 5-0, uh, oh, uh, 170 World's Weight Championship title for a cage combat. So pretty good. Uh, Kane, mentally, how can I, can I, how can I get prepared? For the fight, how can I get mentally prepared? Um, game plan. You know, you and your coaches get a game plan together. You go out there, stick to that game plan. You know, and again, if it's not working, then you gotta switch it. But again, b before that, you have to, you have to, you have to make up a plan A, plan B, plan C. Mm -hmm. You know, s study your opponent, get a game plan, go in there and, and and do it. How hard is it to fight three five-minute rounds? Three five-minute rounds. It's easy. Five three-minute rounds is easy. It's easy. But three five-minute rounds. <laughs> Yeah. It's easy. <laughs> Much respect, Cejudo. Uh, Tisha Torres, you came out to Victor Poses Nogi, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Please come back. We got some good girls. Much respect. Okay.
sweet Fight Club shirt. Hey, how's it going, guys? <laughs> I got a quick question. Since it's a uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, what, what do you think on that clown that's running for president? Oh, I'm talking about Donald Trump, by the way. Politics is the best. He's like the, he's like the Conor McGregor of politics right now, so it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Okay. We, I'm getting wrapped up, so let's um, go to a question they might want to answer over here. Sorry, we only got time for one more. Yes. Hi. Uh, my name is George, and I'm here from Houston, Texas. I just want to say hi to Tisha Torres. Been a fan from you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Been a fan from you since okay. Ultimate Fighter. I like the way you kept your post, uh, your calmness. You know, been professional through there. Pettis. Man, love you since day one, since WEC, since you gave that flying knee off the cage to Benson. Can't wait to see you at Chulas tonight. Drinks on me. Kane <laughs> was here in 2013, here in Houston, saw you win. Can't wait to see you get the belt back in March. Viva Mexico. Thank you. Okay, so that Thank wasn't you. a question, so sorry, Niner. I'm doing one more. Over here. <laughs> Comments uh, for Henry, man. It's good to see you again on this stage, bro. I remember you in high school in Colorado. You uh, come into XL wrestling practices, so it's good to see you on the stage, man. I just wanted to say you're an inspiration, bro. Thanks a lot. I think, I thank you, man. Does, does anyone have a question? I have a question. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My question is for... <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. You, go ahead. Yeah. Go no, ahead. Get the kid first. We, we, we'll get to him last. We'll, we'll wrap the okay. show with the star. Well, my question is for Anthony Perez. Uh, I used to live in Racine, uh, Racine, Wisconsin, so I'm pretty, you know, happy about the things you have done in the Milwaukee area. I want to know when you get your next title shot. Do you rather get the title shot in Puerto Rico or defend the title in Puerto Rico and take Tisha Torres with you? Yes, please take me. I think winning, it, winning in Puerto Rico will be big. Yeah, Tisha has definitely has to be on that card. So yeah, winning, winning in Puerto Rico will be huge. But. Uh, I gotta, I gotta earn that, man. So it depends on who's the champ and what makes sense. Okay. Hey, and can do you have time after this so you can sign the belt? Kane sure. already signed it in Vegas, and I've been trying to fo follow you through Vegas and different Creepily camps, and I just want you to sign the belt. Hey, don't make it creepy, but yeah, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Finally, we gotta wrap up, and we, we're gonna get to you. What's your question? Okay. This for all the fighters. If you had an opportunity to go against anyone in your division except the champ, who would it be? Yeah. Yeah. Who is it? I'll go first. I got Nate, Nate Diaz. That's the fight that I want. Okay. Tisha and I are pulling a double team. A double team. We go with Carlos. Carlos Barza. We got some history there. There's only one person that we I want. We don't like that's, cookies. Uh, that's Verdum. That's it. And one, one person. Yeah, D, a DJ for me. I know, obviously, uh, I, I want the belt eventually. So that's that's the one that uh, he has a belt. So. Thank, I, I'm, thank I'm you. sorry, but it'd probably be it'd probably be Benavides. Okay. I don't fight, guys, so it doesn't really matter. I I don't go in the octagon. I stand outside, so it's fine. Thank All right. you. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Fans, thank you for coming out. Thank you, everybody. Houston, you're always amazing. <laughs> really appreciate it. Don't forget, tomorrow, the UFC 192 Fan Village will be across the street. It's presented by Halo 5, 12 to 4. Come meet some of your favorite fighters. And you can get a wristband and pre-register at UFCregister.com. I suggest doing that now. Luke Rockhold, Paige Van Zandt, Kane, they'll all be there. Houston, thank you. Fighters will be on the scale at 4 o'clock. See you then.